Sometimes as highly sensitive people, we can come on the awakening journey expecting to become less sensitive or to be able to deal with uh, this sensitive nature of myself a little bit easier. But the spiritual awakening journey makes you more sensitive, not less. So I'm going to discuss this in this video. You know, when we begin a spiritual awakening journey, in basically every case, it happens spontaneously. Whether that's a big eruption of a Kundalini awakening, like it was for, for me and, and others, or whether it's still, you know, a more, a more gradual process, the first instance of realization of awakening is spontaneous. You can't force this stuff. It's not ego-based. There's a reason why you didn't understand these principles before, but now we're beginning to understand them. That goes for all of us, me included in that. And that's because, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lessening of this egoic uh, distortion of life and we're just feeling listening rather than thinking listening, if this makes sense. If it does so far, then fantastic. <laughs> if it doesn't and I just sound crazy, that's okay too. So, as a highly sensitive person, which you'll likely be if you're watching this video, we have, I suppose, two aspects of being highly sensitive. There's the positive side of being highly sensitive, meaning you can pick up on uh, energy. What do I mean? You can pick up on emotions. You can pick up on, if you're sensitive enough, thoughts. Uh, you can pick up on, um, yeah, I don't know, there's almost like a sixth sense in you. You can sometimes get what we might call cosmic downloads from the universe that come through this, this physical apparatus from, um, from source, if we can speak like this. So that's the, the great benefit of being highly sensitive, also that you feel more, okay? But on the other side of that, feeling more aspect is we take things really personally. And if the ego then gets involved in that personal hurt and creates identity around it, we create a hell of a load of trouble for ourselves. Now, it's a difficult time to be a highly sensitive person in a very, very cruel, broken world because everybody's just getting there crap on each other aren't they they've been conditioned they've been hurt and then they get that hurt on other people just by ghosting by being abusive not that they're abusive people we're not to form an identity around it or a judgment around it it's just that's their conditioning that's what they know to do they don't even know they're being abusive they just think that this is the way that love is shared because that's how it was received from the, the parent lineage for example so when we are highly sensitive people, we take on more than we should, <laughs> not more than we should, because you're this way and therefore you, you, know, you should be this way because that's you are the way you are. But we take on uh, a lot of emotional burden on people, now from people. Now this can be problematic, like I said, I, meant, I mentioned a moment ago, if we could form an identity around it, this can be problematic. So why we do the sadhana is because, and if you want some sadhana, you're more than welcome to sign up for the free breathing practice down below, also the free application for awakening coaching, I'm beginning to accept applications again. That's all down below, and the free community down there if you're going through an awakening and, and you want to speak to people with you know that are like-minded that are also going through this awakening journey that nobody really knows much about because it's not documented about too much that's why I make the videos anyway I digress this is why we do the sadhana not so that we get less sensitive or that we uh, uh, negate the sensitive side of us because it's our biggest power but so that we can embrace it more the sadhana is the tools the, the teaching mechanism through which we can learn to be with one's sensitive nature the thing that it will stop us doing too in time is it will create a deeper awareness inside of ourselves where this ego identity manufacturing machine in the mind is so much further distant from who we are meaning the witness and it's almost on the peripheries, the surface level of our consciousness, so that if something was going to be taken personal, we can 
listen to it if we want, if we want to create that pain inside of ourselves and draw ourselves back to the periphery of our consciousness. But in time, because of the sadhana, we begin to notice, ah, yeah, this is just this personal sense of self playing itself out in the dynamic world, which I've never been a part of as the witness. Doing the sadhana will make you feel more, not less. And that's a great thing. When we go through the dark night of the soul, we begin to realize, ah, my feeling range, my feeling spectrum is beginning to increase. And yes, that does mean lower lows, but you'll have to admit, it means higher highs too. And then all of the range in the middle, the path to enlightenment said to my, my teacher said to me, is just to have a phenomenally uh, uh, supernatural range of feeling. So yes, that does mean the good and the bad too. I think for me, highly sensitive people don't get the training necessary to be able to cope with this highly sensitive nervous system. On the one hand, highly sensitive nervous systems are fantastic for spiritual awakenings, um, but on the other hand, they're then difficult to be able to deal with, if we have a Kundalini awakening, the aftermath of that huge rush of energy through the system. Because we're highly sensitive as well, almost it's, it's heightened. And I think there was some sort of research done that, that, that stated that about 0.2%, I could be making this up, sorry, about 20%, I'm thinking of super, super sensitive, but about 20% of the population are highly sensitive people. So there's a lot of us out there. It's just there's not the training out there for us that help us begin to deal and, 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 and work and, and manage and learn to be able to effectively use this system in a way that's really beneficial for us and others. Because, like I mentioned earlier, we can take things personally. If something hurts, we'll take it personally, we'll take it on as our identity, we'll live that out. Oh, I'm this one that's weird or strange or that gets hurt a lot and, and we hold on to that pain because it's part of our identity and it's who we know ourselves to be, for example. And there's no real training to change that or to be able to deal with that in our society because we're just taught to be sensitive. Sorry, we're not taught to be sensitive. We're taught how to deal with our sensitivities by our parents who usually say things like, I was speaking to a client earlier who was talking about how she wasn't allowed to get angry as a kid. She had to be shown to be proper. And how much damage that does because as a sensitive person you repress that stuff. You know, we're, we're, we're given our coping mechanisms to deal with our hypersensitivity by our parents who usually aren't oversensitive. And this is why we do this sadhana. This is the power of true yoga, the power of true sadhana. Sadhana just means your, the daily spiritual practice to bring about the highest amount of aliveness and intensity of energy in the system. But it also fundamentally teaches us to be with uncomfortable experience inside of ourselves because it brings mm, mm, a, a deeper standpoint from which we can feel these things and, 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 and a deeper standpoint from which we can see life so that the surface level sensitivities aren't so much who I am and are more just on the surface as an option should we wish to listen to it. For example, in the work that I do, I pick up on lots of different things because I'm sensitive in my system, lots of different things that can help to benefit. Some things won't help so I don't listen to them. There's this discerning aspect, isn't there, with this hypersensitive nervous system. We can choose to take things personally or we can choose to just witness that personal identity forming, creating machine in the mind and not get attached to it. And then in that sense, we stay as the witness and don't affect our emotional sensitivities. We don't affect our emotions. I hope this helps. I don't know by this point, that could have just been a, a total rambling. See, it's getting interesting because the universe, the way it speaks to me now is just, it just gives me an idea. It used to come up on a bubble of bliss and ecstasy and now, you know, we only need things to get us so far on the journey. Now I'm committed to doing this. Now it just gives an idea. No bliss, no ecstasy. Maybe it's just that I've got used to feeling good inside, that it doesn't feel too much different. But uh, it's very strange. So now I just get this idea, boom, and here I am. So hopefully it was good. Hopefully it helped. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Have a lovely evening.